what the heck is this? And this, or this weird reflection? And can you see what's wrong with this scene? I watched Mark Rober's crow video at super low speed, and at times, even frame by frame. And what I found, well, it will likely blow your mind, but probably not in the way Mark intended. Look, I actually like the guy and his channel, but some of the stuff in this video, it's going to raise some eyebrows. I guarantee it. If you thought the whole Tesla autopilot controversy was bad, this is worse. Because unlike the Tesla thing, where he pretty much said, sorry, I didn't know that. I don't know why it would disengage. Some of the stuff here, it looks intentional. And he edits his own videos. I still edit and write my own videos. So there's no denying them. Buckle up. Because before this video, these are stuff nobody else seems to notice. Like seriously, what the heck is this? And this, or this weird reflection. And can you see what's wrong with this scene? So did Mark Rober lie in this video? Short answer, yes. But the real question is, how big are the lies? You watch, you decide. But first, quick recap so we're all on the same page. The star is Cheryl, presented here as this hyper-intelligent crow taking on Mark's extremely challenging puzzle continent. Take it, Mark. These juicy nugs are the favorite food of an incredibly intelligent crow. But they're being defended by this birdcage. Because if she wants to gain access to the nugs, she'll need to first solve the nine increasingly difficult Increasingly difficult puzzles I designed to protect them. This crow escape room gauntlet is extremely challenging. As you saw, Mark emphasizes in a video, the puzzle solving are sequential. Cracking one puzzle unlocks the next. The key thing pushed in the video is that each puzzle is designed with a challenge, an automatic success detector, and an automatic trigger for the next puzzle. The whole narrative hinges on this being fully automated. Mark even says at one point that the cage will lift autonomously. And the only way for this birdcage to autonomously unprotect the nugs is if she solves all nine of our puzzles. A claim we'll definitely revisit. So the presented plan is Cheryl flies in, solves all nine puzzles in order, completely alone, gets her reward, and even gives a thank you nugget to Mark's painting. And then offered it up, almost as a gesture of mutual respect and goodwill between our species. It's a brilliant marketing angle for Crunch Labs, inspiring kids to think like an engineer. It's written right on the side of every Crunch Labs build box. And become a future genius like Mark Rober. If you're considering buying, maybe do it before finishing this video. Just saying. Mark definitely didn't sponsor this investigation. He wouldn't want to. Here's the puzzle breakdown as presented. Puzzle 1, drop stones in cylinder. Water rises, touches copper tapes. Arduino lights up puzzle 2. Puzzle 2, put enough weight on the left to outweigh key on the right. Skill tips, hits limit switch, lights up puzzle 3. Puzzle 3, ring bell under Mark's pick. Piezo sensor gets triggered. NFC build drops from ceiling. Repeat three times for puzzle four. Puzzle four, insert three NFC builds from puzzle three, triggers NFC reader in the box, tool compartment opens, lights up puzzle five. Puzzle five, take tool from puzzle four, bend into a hook, fish out bucket, weight chains detected, lights up puzzle six. Puzzle six, stack buckets, at last bucket from puzzle five, complete circuit, Puzzle 7 lights up. Puzzle 7, get baited using a nugget piece. Stick head in painting hole. Pose for camera, lights up puzzle 8. Sounds easy? Mark says it's super hard. This is a level 7 puzzle. But for humans, it might as well be level 9. Yes, the human teams had to do all the 9 puzzles too. To get the juicy nugs, you gotta solve 9 puzzles in this room. How the humans solved this one is a mystery because unfortunately, Mark's video doesn't show it. Puzzle 8. Pull cork and rope, tilt ship in bottle, trigger tilt switch, puzzle 9 lights up. Puzzle 9, knock the blue egg down to the floor, IR emitter inside egg lights up, signal sensor under table, kits lifts autonomously. So two points to take note of. Point 1, the only way is for Cheryl to solve all 9 puzzles alone, sequentially. Point 2, the cage lifts autonomously. No manual help from humans to lift the cage for Cheryl. And for the bonus level, Grateful Cheryl grabs Nugget, dips in tasty clear sauce, gives it to Mark's painting, wholesome ending achieved. I need to explain why the sequential and alone part of solving this puzzle matters for Mark. 
and that is because it will imply Cheryl's intelligence in specific ways. First up, no skipping. Cheryl can't dock the hard stuff. She gotta do them all, in order, alone. Second, resourcefulness. Cheryl must be smart enough to use the items from earlier puzzles, like those NFC bills or the hook tool, to crack the later ones. Big brain moves indeed. And third, no special crow treatment. Mark highlights she tackled this solo while the humans worked in teams. His video title even calls her the world's smartest crow. And one kid actually said they needed to think like a crow to solve a puzzle. Think like a crow. How smart is this crow supposed to be? We'll find out. And does that imply that Cheryl succeeded in solving the puzzles before them? But Mark said humans were the control group first. So I invited a few of them out to serve as a control group before Cheryl made her official attempt. It's a bit confusing. Anyway, the narrative pits solo crow genius against human teams. It definitely feels like the goal is to make Cheryl's feet seem extraordinary, especially next to humans. Understandably, crow outsmarts humans sells better than humans outsmart crow. Let's quickly look at a few things. For puzzle 5, the hook looks different going in versus coming out. Okay, multiple tries. We'll let this one slide for now. Between puzzle 5 and 6, the tool for puzzle 5 appears, vanishes, reappears elsewhere, then vanishes again. Editing between different attempts? Okay, let's be graceful. We'll let this pass too. Alright now, enough with the small stuff. This is where things get really weird. Let's get into the findings that seriously challenge the whole narrative Mark presented. At one point, one of the kids said, We gotta get out before Mark gets here. Why say that? Was it a joke or a hint that Puzzle 7, the tourist trap, was impossible for them to solve because they don't have wings? Makes you wonder. And yes, the kids must also solve all nine puzzles too. Not just Cheryl. And this next thing is before Puzzle 1. Watch closely. Before Cheryl even seems to start the course, these books on a shelf shift position. This implies someone was resetting things between takes, meaning this wasn't her first clean run entering the fully prepped room. Was she trained or rehearsed in the specific room beforehand? At 1335, Cheryl starts Puzzle 1, and Mark's pick is centered on Puzzle 3. But a few seconds later, while she was still working on Puzzle 1, the picture on Puzzle 3 has changed. Mark's now on the right. If Cheryl's busy with stones in Puzzle 1, who is ringing the bell to change the pictures in Puzzle 3? Hmm. Now, this is a big one. During Cheryl's initial fly around, before she supposedly tackles Puzzle 1, Puzzle 1's cylinder already has stones in it. Puzzle 2's scale is already tipped in a soft state. Puzzle 6 and Puzzle 7 are not even set up yet. This completely breaks the sequential order and solve alone from start to finish rule right out of the gate. For Puzzle 4, look carefully at this dollar bill used to solve the puzzle. There are no NFC strip on either side. So to help nudge her in the right direction, the lights to the cash grab turn themselves on. And after a bit of poking around, she figured out what to do by putting the money in the box. It is supposed to look like this. Feels a bit suspicious. Was the NFC reader actually doing anything? Or is it just a gimmick? Now this one is subtle but revealing. The picture sequence on Puzzle 3, Lemon Guy, Backyard Scientist, Mark Rober, seen before she attempts to solve it, is identical to the sequence shown after all nine puzzles are supposedly solved. Remember, this is the bonus challenge at the end, when Cheryl gives a nugget to Mark's painting. Why does that matter? Because by the time she did solve Puzzle 3 by getting her third bill, the sequence is this. Beast, Mark Rober, McConnell. And stayed that way. No turning observed. And she moved on to the next puzzle so she couldn't change them again. So, the fact that these sequences are identical strongly suggests the shot where she paid tribute to Mark at the end after Puzzle 9 might have been filmed before she even tackled Puzzle 3. So this statement... 
before she even finished her long-coveted well-earned reward, she delighted me with one final touching surprise as she grabbed another nug, slathered it in a little dipping sauce, and then offered it up, almost as a gesture of mutual respect and goodwill between our species. Is bogus. No? And really, would the world's smartest crow give a nugget to a painting instead of to the real Mark? After all, she had a lot of opportunities to give it to human Mark. Now, between puzzle 4 and 5, the book positions change between the toolbox opening and Cheryl checking puzzle 5 6 seconds later, then change back again 20 seconds later. This makes tracking the actual sequence of events confusing, especially when Mark claimed that it was Cheryl's first attempt. And on her first attempt, she tries to sort of wedge the cup with the stick. And here Cheryl flies up to puzzle 7, but the nugget bait on the metal strip isn't installed yet. If she is alone, how is the puzzle being set up mid-run? Then one second later, poof, the bait and the strip magically appear. Intervention seems likely. And here's something peculiar. Look as the bait nugget flickers in and out of existence for a frame. Glitch in the matrix? Then after supposedly solving puzzle 7, puzzles 5 and 6 wasn't even set up yet. How is that possible if things are sequential? When Cheryl was on puzzle 9, the rope on puzzle 8 is over a branch. Three seconds later, the rope is off the branch. What happened there? Also, at 2011, the entire puzzle 7 painting setup has vanished. How does that happen if Cheryl is solving the puzzles alone in the room? Well, turns out she wasn't alone. Right here, clear as day, someone's foot is visible on the right side of the screen. Cheryl was not alone. Actually, forget squinting to find humans in a room with Cheryl. The manual camera pans in some shots, strongly suggests a human operator inside the room filming her. And that neon green jacket reflection in the ship bottle? No way someone fits on either side of the bottle in this scene shown. An apparition worthy of slapped hand? What do you think is going on? Write in the comments below. You can also see here, when Cheryl dropped the blue egg, the battery fell out. Unless you think that Cheryl is smart enough to put it back in, humans will likely have to be there to do it for her. Otherwise, how would the cage autonomously lift after this puzzle? Oh, and don't bother looking for this scene in the current video because it was cut out in the latest upload of Mark's video. And speaking of that autonomously lifted cage, how exactly does it lift itself here? Puzzle 7 isn't set up, and puzzle 5 and 6 look untouched. Then miraculously, just 2 seconds later, puzzles 5 and 6 are suddenly shown as soft, even though puzzle 7's painting is still missing. The presented order of events seems completely jumbled and contradicts the core sequential solve alone premise. But wait, and this is the bombshell. Let's talk about Cheryl herself, or should I say, Cheryl's. Look at these pics. Pause if you need to. Do you see one crow or more? I call the crow in these three pictures Cheryl Harmozy. Can you see why? I call the crows in these three pictures Cheryl Drool. Can you see why? And I call the crow in these two pictures Torpedo Cheryl. She has a smooth beak, two little dots on the lower beak, and an aerodynamic head. I think there are three crows. What do you think? Still not convinced? Check the leg straps. These pigs have the right strap old and worn, left strap new. This pig, both straps look new. And this, both straps look old and worn. Still think it's one bird? Come on. But you need undeniable proof because you suck at finding Wally? Okay. I give you undeniable proof. Here it is. Watch this clip at 2018 again. At least two crows in one frame at the same time. If you're still not convinced, you're a lost cause. So yeah, the crow species did the puzzles. But was it one single genius crow who solved all the puzzles in sequence unassisted by humans? The evidence points strongly to no. It looks like a team effort. Does using multiple birds count as a lie? A white lie? How much does it change things for you? What do you think? Let me know. Oh, and subscribe. Ring the bell if you like the video so far. Thanks. Now, let's zero in on Cheryl's hook-making stunt for Puzzle 5. 
the part Muckrober himself called quite possibly one of the coolest things I have ever seen. As she goes full on blacksmith mode, hammering away, fashioning the end of the stick into a hook. One of the coolest things he had ever seen. Now, if Cheryl figured that out all on her own, completely untrained, that's not just smart. That's potentially groundbreaking animal intelligence right there. And here's why it stands out. Mark specifically tells us Cheryl was trained for a bunch of other puzzles, specifically puzzles 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. He lays it out. But puzzle 5? The hook skill? Crickets. No mention of any training at all. Think about the others he didn't mention training for. Puzzle 7 just needed bait. Lure the crow solved the puzzle. No complex skill needed there. And puzzle 9? Okay, knocking an egg off a stand is not rocket science. But Mark shows a clip comparing it to crows cracking walnuts on a road to get food. Fair enough, crows are smart problem solvers for food. But hold on, cracking a walnut for a snack is one thing. Cheryl knocking this specific egg over, supposedly to expose an air emitter inside, to signal to a sensor under a table so the cage gets lifted up? That's some X-ray vision next level tech savvy crow stuff. How else would she even know there's tech inside that egg she needs to activate to lift the cage? Interesting, but honestly, I'm still more fascinated by how Cheryl could supposedly invent a hook for Puzzle 5 all by herself, untrained. That feels like the real leap in thinking prowess. So naturally, I had to dig deeper into that. I started looking really closely, and what do you know? Take a look at this tool. A plain straight wooden stick? Look closer. Could it be something else? Maybe like a stick combined with a pipe cleaner? that can be used to make a Ryan Reynolds, your sister, a dragon, and yes, a hook? Well, if you look closely here, doesn't that look an awful lot like a hook? If that's the case, it kind of paints a different picture, right? It starts to look a lot like this tool wasn't just a random stick, but something specifically designed by her trainers made perfectly for practicing exactly this task, solving puzzle five. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still clever for a crow to figure out how to use even a pre-made hook tool correctly. But Cheryl even blacksmithed it herself. Even if she was trained to do so, it was still very impressive. Props to her for that. But it's definitely not the miracle of spontaneous, genius-level tool invention and creation Mark's video kind of implies, is it? It dials down the wow factor quite a bit for me. At this point, maybe that X-ray vision, tech genius, egg drop puzzle solving operation is the most unbelievable feat here. No wonder it's a level 9 puzzle. So what's the verdict? Is Cheryl the crow or crows smart? Absolutely. Crows are incredibly intelligent animals compared to earthworms. Did one crow solve this complex sequence of 9 puzzles sequentially alone under the exact conditions presented? Based on the evidence in Mark's own video, it seems highly unlikely. But what we likely saw was a masterful piece of storytelling achieved through clever editing, hidden help, some broken rules, and sneaky casting choices. It's kind of like a magic show, amazing to watch, but the reality behind the curtain is less impressive. Just knowing all this, the potential helpers, the sequence breaks, the possibility of multiple Cheryls change how you view the video, does it spoil the magic? Or does it feel like a significant misrepresentation? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below.